Hey guys, so now we're going to talk about impulse and momentum problems when forces are not variable. Let's check it out. So, so far everything we've done, you might have noticed, talked about an object's average force. Average force. And you may remember that an average force is also a constant force. And that's because constant forces are much simpler than variable forces. Um, but the problem is when you have collisions, forces are not constant. When you have collisions, forces are variable. They're changing up. So to make things easier, we said, well, let's just then talk about the average force. When there's a collision, typically what happens is something like this. Objects moving and then it hits right here and the force goes up and then it goes down like this. Okay? So this is force over time. So what do we do? We talked about the average force. Okay? Think about when uh, like a tennis ball hits a wall over here, right? So as soon as it starts touching, the wall starts pushing on it. The more that the ball compresses, the more sort of a surface area it has to be pushed against. And then it starts sort of loosening up. And if you just press your arm, like slowly, your hand slowly like this against your arm, you can tell that it hurts more and more. And then as it goes away, it stops hurting. Okay, so it looks, most collisions will look something like this. Um, now, when we have problems where forces are variable, which is new, so we're just now introducing these, the total impulse will be the area under the force time graph. If you've done, um, if you've done work so far, you may remember that work is the area under a force times position graph. This is similar. J is the area under force time graph. Okay, so it's the same concept. Again, if you've covered work and energy, great. If you haven't, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Um, you get to it. So, got a few examples here and some practice problems for us to try. I have a five kilogram object initially at rest. So the mass is five, the initial velocity is zero, and it's acted upon by a variable force according to the diagram below. So a force time graph, that's how it's always going to be. Force is measured in newtons and time is measured in seconds. So let's calculate the total imp impulse delivered to the object. So total impulse is given by this equation here. Right? We can use any one of these forms to do it. But if you look around, we actually don't have the any uh, we don't have enough information to do this basically. And this is actually not applicable in this case because this only works for a average force or a constant force. Average and constant mean um, average forces are constant forces. So a more generic way to write this would be like this. Well, but the force is not constant. So instead, it's going to be the area of F T graph. Cool? So it's the area of this graph here. Since I have uh, a graph that looks like this, it goes up, then it goes down, we have to segment this graph into two areas. So I'm going to split this up. This is area one, and this is area two. All right? So this is going to be A1 plus A2. This is really simple. These are right triangles. Um, so the area of any triangle is just BH over two base times height plus uh, divided by two. And then I'm going to do this. This is for the first one. And I'm going to do this for the second one, BH2 over two. Okay? So very straightforward. If you plug in the numbers, the base here is one, two, three. That's a three right there. The base here is from three to seven. So it's one, two, three, four, five, three to eight actually. So this base here is five. And the height for both of them obviously is four. So this is four, three over two. This is five or four, five over two. And if you combine this, you get 16. Okay, the unit is obviously NS because it's joules. I mean, not joules, um, impulse. Cool, what about the object's final speed? So how do we find the final? Well, now we can use part of that impulse equation to do this because impulse is area or delta P or M V final V initial. This still works, right? So we can do that. Um, and we can V initial is zero, 
we can use this to find V final. Impulse is 16, the mass is 5, and then V final is right there. So V final is 16 over 5, it's 3.2 meters per second. Very straightforward. The only new thing here is calculating the area. You'll probably get some really simple area, and that's it. So I got a practice problem. I want you to give it a try. Um, just remember that this area is a little bit different than this area. Hopefully you can get it. Let's try it.